Well, hello everyone. How are y'all's days going? Because, um, hopefully it's about to get a lot better. <laughs> Today we're doing something a little different, as I've never done uh, content like this before, but, you know, it seemed kind of fun. I wanted to give it a little try, so let's cut to the, uh, let's cut to the chase. You've read the title, probably gone out of your way to find my channel, so, um, how about we get started, alright? Today I'm taking the My Hero Academia universe and putting it head to head with the Helldivers universe to see who comes out on top. Now again, let me reiterate, I've actually never done something like this before, so take what I say with a grain of salt, and you know, it's it's a really weird matchup, I don't think anyone's ever really thought of, you know, My Hero and the Helldivers in the same sentence before. But you know, I was, I was playing Helldivers as the new season came out and it's like, mm, fuck it, you know? Seems kinda interesting, right? That's that's my thought process, you know, so it's like I might as well <laughs> just see what comes from it. So what are we even talking about here today? Well, basically, what I'm thinking is I'm gonna take the entire Health Divers universe, be it Super Earth, the Tyranids, the Automatons, and just slam them all at the my hero verse. That's it. It's the my hero world. And it's the Helldivers, you know, Tyranids on the planet, Automatons on the planet, you know, Super Earth coming down, shooting their lasers and shit, you know what I mean. It's very basic things to understand. But, um, you see, the issue is I don't know how to scale this, because, again, I've never really done this before. I've done scaling before, not to this amount, and not so free as I've wanted to. Because, you know... <laughs> I could use the versus wiki uh, if I was a fucking loser. I'm not using that. That wiki sucks, man. It, like, genuinely, it's got the most brain-dead opinions in anything that I've ever seen. I don't know what the versus wiki is thinking, but it's not good. So, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna use... I, I will see, like, the feats that they pull up and stuff, but I'm gonna, like, think about it in my own mind and see if it makes sense, you know what I mean? So that's kind of how the scaling is gonna go. I do somewhat agree with the My Hero scaling and Helldiver scaling. So, you know, I kind of sell that nonsense for no reason, but I don't know. Just like, you'll see. You'll see later on the video. You'll see. So then, uh, who to scale first? I'm thinking home field advantage here, so my heroes gotta go first. Let's scale them. See what the hell divers are working against. See what my heroes got up their sleeves. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So how strong exactly is my hero? Well... They're a big fish in a small pond. Uh, I mean, for example, the highest scaling of AP that they have is, um, hold on. If you don't know what AP is, it's attack potency, or basically how hard you can hit things, and the size of things that you're gonna blow up with your fists. Example, you can punch a wall and it bro and it, bro and it breaks. Your wall level, right? It's easy as that. Or, if you punch a nuclear bomb and it blows up in your face, you know, you probably can't punch a fucking, you know, small town away, but you can survive a small town explosion in your face, or maybe like a large town explosion, you know what I mean? Depends on the size of the bomb, but it's basically what AP is, it's really easy to like, understand what AP is, it's just the strength of the character. If you look at AP, you can pretty much see who will win a fight, just, just by AP, most of the time. But the, the feat in question here that I'm bringing up, is when Deku uses a uh, Fa Jin, I think that's how you pronounce it, which is the ability to gather kinetic energy and like release it, right? He uses it and he uses this punch called Detroit Smash Quintuplet. And, you know, if I'm looking at the calc here, it shows what looks to be the, what is it, the curvature of the earth, which is just disgusting, you know what I mean? That's crazy. And, you know, it. <laughs> It looks like he just destroyed an entire landmass there and just obliterated it. Like, it looks like he literally cratered the Earth, which is just disgusting, right? And also, you know, Quintuplet, it's very easy to see. It puts his, the normal Detroit Smash five times. That's what a Quintuplet is. It's a five times, like, you know, five times of something. And, you know, they, the calc say he's around large island to small country level. You know, that kind of makes sense. He did crater what seems to be a large amount of Earth because of the whole curvature thing. I could be overstating him here, but let's be real. They kind of need all the, like, <laughs> my hero needs all the strength that they could get for this fight, honestly. <laughs> now, 
the whole Detroit Smash five times thing. Like, how strong is the Detroit Smash? Let's put this into example for you. He basically destroys this gigantic metal cube that's like hundreds of the times like of his size and it's a solid metal cube and he like blows it up with like one Detroit Smash. And if it's five times, that, that's disgusting. That seems like it would blow up like islands and shit, you know what I mean? It just, it seems that strong. It just, it just feels that way. And because of that, I'm going to give it to him, whatever, you know what I mean? It just, it looks like if he really wanted to, he could fucking, he could fly into the, like, into an island and just blow it up with his hand and just like fucking destroy, just level the entire island. Because he probably could. Loki, he probably can do that. It's, it doesn't seem that hard for him to be able to do it. I mean, the quintuplet looks like he genuinely just blew up a small country. <laughs> It, it's it's crazy it's crazy looking so we'll give him large island level ap you know that's it's underneath small country but that's above island level so it's it seems pretty fair large island level is a good amount of ap for him speed is up next you know you get there's two pieces to the whole power scaling pie you got ap and you got speed they're sprinkling on top called hacks and some verses that I know uses a crazy amount of hacks for everything. That's just the, all the whole entire pie is sprinkling, basically. But what I'm trying to say is speed is up next. And how do I calc speed for this verse? Um, I mean, you know, there's a lot of feats to go off of. There's this one really early on feat where there's like kid with like a belly button. Like, I don't remember his fucking name, but I, I, it's Ayama, I think like Ayama or whatever he shoots out this like laser beam that someone like jumps over but it's liquidy so I don't think it's like a real laser beam you know but there are like later on light speed scalings so basically for reference the main villain uh Shigaraki like does something where he, he emits radio waves at these planes right he's like stealth bombers and they dodge out of the way of it they weave out of the way of it right and then he fucking fights the same exact stealth bombers and blitz the people inside of them. Like, perception blitz them, which means you're moving so fast that they don't even understand what the fuck is happening. And they're like, whoa, like, where did she rock? Yo, you know, he's going that fucking fast. And if you don't know radio waves in a vacuum, move at the speed of light. And, you know, it's not the vacuum. Or it's not the vacuum. It's not a vacuum. It's air, right? But they're still moving percentages of the speed of light. So because of that and then because on top of shigaraki dodging or not, not dodging um speed blitzing those like stealth bombers who were able to dodge the radio waves and then deku on top of that right being able to perception blitz shigaraki like later on with a uh, fajan i'm pretty sure they're pretty fast like if a guy who's a tier above percentages of light and then there's a guy who's even above that so far that he can't even understand what's happening you got to be kind of like fast right that just kind of makes sense so i'm gonna give them ftl it makes sense now uh what about hacks those sprinkles that i was talking about my hero has really bad hacks from what i remember and from what i'm like able to research it doesn't have great hacks like mirio which is lamillion like his hero name is able to like no clip through objects which is pretty cool right and Shigaraki can negate durability with his uh, decay if he like puts his hands over you. But that's like literally it. Like they <laughs> they don't have a whole lot of hacks. Like my oh that's not Deku. This is off script by the way. Deku has hacks. Like he has it's not precognition, but like he has like a like a spider sense almost. So, like that's pretty cool. It's not like a great precog. Like it's it's more like the future sight in hockey instead of like an epitaph from JoJo. You know what I mean? It's it's not like real future sight. It's, again, it's precog. You could just kind of think what's gonna happen before it happens. But even then, Deku's is a step below precog because it's really just like the feeling that you're about to get hit and then you can dodge it away. It's it's really, really bad precog is what I'm trying to say, but he still has precog technically. It's just shitty precog. <laughs> All right, so. Everything's set up in place for my hero. We basically went over a lot of things. Um, I know I didn't go over everything. I really rarely, like, not rarely, I barely went over, like, my hero, right? But, honestly, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna bring up 
things later on in the video when they're like you know like necessary to bring up for like the battle right but just keep in mind shigaraki would scale basically exactly to deku and all might would scale slightly below deku because you know all might's weaker than deku and his strongest was weaker than deku's strongest and that's been described and shown it was still weaker than deku because his is amped up even more on top of having Fajin and everything. So he's, and even the shitty precog, you know, he's still better than All Might at this current point. You know, all for one, still really strong. Bakugo kind of gets up there. It's it's basically just Deku and Shigaraki are the pinnacles, and that's what I'm going to take for the majority of the verse. But, um, you know, that's basically it for the My Hero side, so let's go over Helldiver's analysis. This should be pretty easy. For reference, by the way, I'm using the uh, Helldivers 2 continuity and the scaling from the specific game. It's Helldivers 1 just feels different and Helldivers 2 is the more modern one. So I'm going to use the more modern, more, you know, exactly more modern interpretation of Helldivers. <coughs> Helldivers is far easier to scale than My Hero Academia, like way, way easier. And My Hero was kind of easy to scale anyway. It's because... Helldivers has bombs and guns. That's basically all they have. They have laser beams and shit. It's basically just their bombs that they have. Like, most of the attacks, like, are small building to town size. Like, if even that small town size, probably. Because, like, the biggest attack that's seen in Helldivers is a fucking hell bomb, right? And that thing, like, blows up, like, gigantic foundries. But that's it. It doesn't blow up like entire towns like length. Like you could run out of a hell bomb as it's activating, basically. That's not an entire you can't run through a town as a nuke activates, you know what I mean? It's not as strong as a nuke. It's like you know, it's like small town size. It blows up which is impressive, it blows up entire steel foundries to make robots and like electronics and stuff, which is very impressive. But that's like point blank, it like eviscerates everything. <laughs> Most of the uh Average hell divers like the actual infantry have um, guns like rifles, shotguns, snipers, laser rifles, small explosive devices like grenades and like you know rockets and stuff. That's not small rockets, but they're basically just explosive devices, and uh, that's not really good. Like, if you want to get into specific hell diver scaling, you could argue, and this is crazy, right? You could argue relativistic for the hell divers. Which, I'm gonna- let me explain why. The automatons use these laser weapons which fire out plasmic energy, and that could be argued to being either hypersonic or relativistic, depending on if you think- I just said it was plasma, but some people do think it's literal laser beams. So if you think it's a real laser beam that they're firing, and they're dodging it, like, when it's far away, you could be, like, relativistic by dodging that laser beam. It could be possible. I'm not giving them relativistic, I'm giving them, like, subsonic. Like, they're not that fast. They're clanking around in that armor constantly. They're not gonna be dodging bullets and shit, that's just not possible. I mean, yeah, in-game the bullets are kinda slow, and if you really wanted to, you could- it, it, it just doesn't matter. Like, their speed doesn't matter. It's not the fact that, like, one Helldiver's gonna be Deku, that's impossible. Deku will shit on all the Helldivers. What makes them strong? and the entire verse is like a whole, is the fucking millions of billions of stupid fucking hordes of enemies. The robots, the fucking, like, bugs, and the fucking hell bearers. You're fighting, like, millions of these fucking motherfuckers, right? They're everywhere. There's, like, a million, two million fucking bugs, two million robots, like, a hundred thousand hell divers, all of them, like, attacking at once. That, that's the threat of the verse, is how much things they have. Like, the bugs in general are pretty weak. Like, they can take, like, pistols, like, pistol rounds to the face. So probably, like, I don't know what, like, caliber they use. If it's 45 or, like, you know, 9 mil. Or if it's, like, a hollow point round made to, like, break, like, muscle and tissue and skin. Or if it's, like, an AP round meant to bust through armor. Basically, the, the most armored things are the chargers and the bile titans. And they can take shotgun shells, like basically to their armored points, and they can take entire mags and be fine, right? Deku can take way more than just a few mags of a shotgun to the face at, like, full power. It's disgusting. But, you know, Tyranids aren't really that 
impressive. It's just the hordes and the fact that they can reproduce so fast is scary. And the automatons have, like, machinery, have laser beams, have bombs, have rifles, you know, have people, have, like, tanks and, like, hulks and stuff. That's scary. But again, look back to the first thing that my hero did. They were fighting gigantic fucking robots. They were fighting automatons before Helldivers 2 came out. And they were killing them in one shot, basically. At least Deku killed one at the very beginning of the show in one shot. He literally one shot the fucking gigantic mech thing. So I don't think it's going to be that big of a problem, the automatons. But what will be a problem is the the stratagems. The stratagems are going to fucking rock because they can send them orbital lasers which move at the speed of light. It is a laser beam that is sh shot from orbit coming down and blasting and it fries you and melts you and blows you up basically. They can call down hell bombs which are the the pseudo-nuclear bombs that basically blow up the foundries. They can call down air support, call down, like, the warthog fires, the boom, you know, they can call down those guys. They can call down, like, bombers and, like, machinery and, like, jetpacks and, like, rocket launchers. They can call down a lot of shit. But it's mostly the people that are scary. That's, like, the people and the population are the second most, like, deciding factor in this entire fight. So, what exactly is the, like the win conditions for each side. For the My Hero side, the win condition is eradicating all aggressive life towards them, basically killing all the automatons, killing all the um, Tyranids, and killing basically the army of Super Earth is their win condition. If they're all dead and they're safe, they win. It's that simple, right? And Helldivers achieve victory when life on Earth is either unsuitable for the My Hero verse, or they're just all dead. It's their win con, basically, is killing everyone or making life uninhabitable on Earth, which is where it's going to take place. It's going to take place in the My Hero Earth, the actual fight. The same one that Deku fucking cratered, the, like, basically, like, con not the continent, the country, like, that, it's going to be taking place on that, like, Earth. By the way, it's also going to be taking place on the strongest version of those planets. So the strongest version would be... I believe probably Deku uh, before the final fight with Shigaraki, so that they're both at their like peaks, at their pinnacles, and can still grow farther. Of course, you know All Might doesn't have his power, but he, there's people who are above All Might at this point, and that's what matters a lot is having that upper scaling. So, um, you know, let's uh, start the fight. So how exactly is this fight gonna go? Well, pretty fucking good for the My Hero Verse. In fact, really, really good for the My Hero Verse. They're gonna, like, fucking clean house for the first few hours and days. They're gonna be destroying people. Like, genuinely, zero sweat on their side. Because if you really, really think about it, Deku with a single self-sustaining no damage taken punch can swath out entire islands worth like big ass islands like entire things worth of just armies and crater them flatten them destroy them he can burrow through the fucking ground with his fucking hands blowing up all the, like the nests and shit and even the shigaraki could just i didn't bring this up but shigaraki's one of his best dis like disintegration feats is touching like an area of like a city and the entire thing just fucking vanishing basically the entire city starts decomposing and everyone that's touching the ground just dies imagine you spread that shit play like the center of the earth and like all like the crater and shit or not the crater the crust of the earth it would kill every single automaton every single hell diver that's not like up in the air basically or doesn't have like a jetpack and can't like escape it. it would kill all the tyranids basically the bile titans the, like the stalkers if they're not like up in the air and flying it would kill almost everything that that disintegration power or that um decay power of course you know they're only in japan these like crazy people and if we're at the strongest stars and stripes from america it doesn't exist at this point for obvious reasons shigaraki could like disintegrate 
decay an entire fucking city worth of people. Oh, it was fucking really bad. And, like, you know, it's it would be going really good for the My Hero people, the heroes and the villains, for a few days. And then they would realize somewhere around, I'd say, the third day mark, that they're still getting attacked. And a large majority of everything on the Earth is dead, basically. But they're still getting attacked by something, right? And that something is the single deciding factor in this entire fight. The fucking Super Destroyers. Those are the biggest single threat that the, the Super Earth-like Navy has, basically. Is the Super Destroyers. Because, you wanna know something crazy? The crazy thing is my hero, right? It doesn't have orbital combat. Which is bad. Really, really, really bad for my hero. See, why this is so bad is because if you think about it, the Helldivers Navy has these ships in space, basically, that are like in the orbit of Earth, that are firing down laser beams, firing down missiles, sending out like attacks and shit they can be there forever basically and just sit in orbit and if they need to like an ftl launch away refill an ftl launch back that is the single scariest thing that the hell divers verse has is this orbital combat system which is the navy that my hero just does not possess a way to get around the orbital combat and because of this they're gonna lose my hero's gonna lose they they, they cannot kill everything that, that Hell Divers has. They have the Super Destroyers. No one can get up into the Super Destroyers. Not a single person in the entire series can get up in a Super Destroyer and kill everything inside of it. And even if they could, to replicate that same feat hundreds of thousands of times over without dying of old age is like impossible, dude. There is so many Super Destroyers and there are still them being made on Super Earth, right? Like, even if I was just to limit it to the Super Destroyers there, and once all 100,000 or whatever are dead, that's it? That doesn't matter. There are still so many Super Destroyers that even if you were to get rid of half of them, everyone would be dead by that point, one way or another. Like, think about it this way, right? What's going to happen to the My Heroverse when the water is evaporated from the constant laser beam usage? There's a fucking hole punched in the atmosphere. A greenhouse effect is trapping gases, killing people and heating up the planet. Farms, towns, hundreds of thousands of millions of people, nearly billions, probably more than billions, have been ravaged and destroyed by the fucking hundreds of thousands of super destroyers blowing up every square foot on the planet. Just blowing it up and leveling it. And then almost every single hero dying of starvation or some sort of lack of something in their body, keeping them, like, kicking basically right what are they gonna do to that because i'll tell you what they can do and that's basically just shigaraki shigaraki is the single person that i think would actually survive this entire onslaught because of his healing factor his healing would keep him alive he could be hit by 10 orbital cannons at once and still live right he's that strong however he can't touch those fucking super destroyers right in in orbit basically and so how I see the fight going is the heroes do really well, really, really well for the first few days. And then they realize they can't beat the Super Destroyers. So they keep fighting, they keep trying to find a way to beat them, they never do. Eventually, all the heroes and villains start dying out random ways. Either the armies come back more and they forgot about, like, some, like, bases or whatever or some nests under the ground are coming back or they just start dying they just start dying it's just that simple something will happen that will cause them to die they will not be able to sustain themselves for that long and they will get tired and fatigued what doesn't get fatigued is a machine right and nothing in my hero is like a real machine that can't get fatigued besides shigaraki basically he could almost never get fatigued and the fucking guy is going to be fighting constantly but he's never going to be able to reach orbit. He can't reach orbit. And even if he does, he can't move around in no air. He's going to die of losing oxygen or become a car situation where he freezes up in space and flies away. 
and just in orbit, basically, and then into the vacuum of space where he has nothing. So, days, weeks, months, years will go by, and the fucking planet Earth will be just decimated, fucking destroyed, apocalyptic, and Shigaraki will still be there the entire time, getting attacked and alive throughout everything. But eventually he will die. Either the planet gives up and just gives in on itself, or Shigaraki gives up and just lets himself die out of basically being trapped in hell, basically. You know what I mean? Because this is this is a living hell now, where he's attacked daily, and one thing will lead to another, and Shigaraki will eventually lose because he cannot reach orbit. Because of this, I believe Helldivers wins this fight. Just straight up, I think they win. I don't think my hero can win, but they can do super fucking well. If there was no super destroyers in this conversation, my hero would clean them out in days. In days, it would be over. All they would need is Shigaraki if they had no super destroyers. But they have hundreds of thousands of navy super destroyers, which is horrifying. So that's it. My hero is wiped. That's just that's that simple, man. Ugh. So. You know, if you like the video, feel free to leave a like, comment on it, sub to me, you know, it'll help out a lot. And I'm going to keep making content like this, even if not a lot of people watch this, because I think it's fun. I think it's fun talking about it, even if the one talking to basically just a screen right now. I think it's still enjoyable to talk about. So I'm going to keep doing it. And this plane can fucking kiss my ass. And I hope you all have a nice day. And um, see you all later.